Howdy! Let's take a look at another one of these rod problems and how to utilize polar coordinates in order to answer the question. Taking a look at number two, it says that a vertical axis is free to rotate. A massless horizontal rod is attached to the axle as shown. There are two small objects attached to the rod. One of the objects has a mass M1 and is fixed um, at the end of the rod. The other with the mass M2 starts right at the point where the rod is attached to the axle. The axle is given an angular velocity omega naught. At a time defined to be t equals zero, the object with the mass M2 moves towards the second object so that the distance from the axle is C1t. So this is moving with some C1t. Where C1 is a known constant. Find the force that the rod exerts on the fixed object as a function of time during the time from t equals zero until the objects are in contact. Now as we know, fr is going to be m times ar, where ar is your d2r dt squared minus r omega squared, and where rf theta is m times a theta. Okay, so that doesn't change. And you want your f total. Now, in this situation, I want to find the force the rod exerts on the fixed object, on M1. This is my fixed object. Therefore, FR is going to be an M1, and your dr dt, your d2 r dt squared, this ain't changing. M1's not going anywhere. That's why both of these are zero. So this is going to be a negative M1 and then your r, it's staying at a constant s. Your r is just going to be s omega squared. And your f theta is going to be m times that s times alpha. Now, m1 is given to us, s is given to us, but omega and alpha aren't. So what we need is we need omega, and we're going to use conservation of angular momentum. And then alpha, of course, is just your derivative of your omega with respect to t. And so, using conservation of angular momentum, I have that L0 equals LF. And initially, M1 is the only thing with angular momentum, because right at t equals 0, M2 is on the axis of rotation. It's not rotating at t equals 0. But at the end, it moves at some uh, speed C1t, or moves at distance C1t. And so, you take your i omega f of m1, which is still the m1s squared, and then omega f. And then, for mass 2, its radius is changing at a rate of c1t. So it'd be m2 times the c1t squared, omega f. You factor out the omega f and divide, and you get that omega is equal to that m1s squared omega naught, divided by the m1s squared, plus the m2, and then c1 squared t squared. So that would be your omega. As for alpha, you gotta use quotient rule. It's gonna be your low d high minus your high d low over low squared. And going through it, alpha is the derivative of omega with respect to t. And notice that everything else is a constant except for that t. That's why the derivative of the top is just gonna be zero, and so forth. So that's how you get alpha. And now that you have omega, and now that you have alpha, if you want to find the force the rod exerts on M1, FR is just your negative M1s omega squared, where that's your omega. F theta is your M1s alpha. And as for your total force, that's just the square root of your FR squared plus your F theta squared. 